trap. I say, Patia, give me a trap. Patia, 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 Patia. Who my dogs at? Who my dogs at? Who my dogs at? Who my dogs at? Give me two clap and a weak player. What's good, football fans? Back at you once again with another video. And oh, yeah, it definitely feels good to see this team sitting atop the NFC East after the first month of the season. Because while I know it's a marathon to the end of the season, no one, including myself, ever thought that they would win their last three straight games in a row. No one thought that they would be sitting where they are right now. I have to say, even the most diehard fan likely did not believe that this is the way things would start. I like the dynamic this team has taken. I like the offensive side of the ball. I really like what they're doing. Jaden Daniels, yeah, he's that guy. And here's the love of it all. He's only going to get better. This guy watches film like a freaking machine. They got him hooked up to the virtue reality over there. This guy is literally learning from his mistakes as he goes. And at the same time, Cliff Kingsbury is calling perhaps what should be viewed or, or looked at as the perfect game plan. This guy has that offense going. As a, a Washington fan that has sat back and watched this team struggle for years being able to do things, it's great to see a direction. You know, Trust Wade probably has the least amount of punts in a four-game span of his career so far, which is crazy, and it's only going to get better. The thing I like about Jaden Daniels is he's not a one-trick pony. It's not like he, he's only effective when he's running the ball. Actually, this guy seems like he's more effective when, he's, when he stands back and throws the ball, but the fact that he can run the ball makes him twice as dynamic, twice as dangerous, if you guys don't think defensive coordinators are out there going nuts trying to figure out how to, to stop this guy, you're crazy. I've said for a while it reminds me more of like a, 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 of a Randall Cunningham with better wheels. And then I heard him talking, you know, the other day about how, you know, Donovan McNabb was the guy he looked up to. And that's why he wears the number five. Kind of makes sense now when I see his game. It does look more like a younger McNabb style. A lot of people forget when McNabb was at Syracuse. He was actually a little bit more of a running quarterback that could throw. And over time, that evolved. This quarterback is ahead of McNabb at the stage he's at right now, you know, as a rookie. Hopefully, he'll be better than McNabb by the end of his career. I don't see any reason why he shouldn't be. He already makes better decisions than McNabb ever did. I know there's some Eagle fans out there that will probably argue the points with me, but hey, it still stands. To me, this kid is ultra smart. And I love the way that you can see the progression of his game, you know, from week to week. I would have to say, though, if there's one part of the team right now that I really am concerned about, it's definitely the secondary. And I'm sure that I'm not the only one in this conversation. I know some people are worried about the linebacker core. You know, coming into the year, we thought they would be uh, much improved, which I believe they have been, but I believe that maybe, just maybe, the uh, the outcome of certain parts of these games and the way that the defense hasn't been able to stop the other team from scoring has got people looking at the linebacker core a little differently and, and, and second, you know, guessing the defensive line as well, which, by the way, I plan on touching on in the next couple of days, so stay tuned on that one. But we have to remember, you know, the defense as a whole is still trying to get it all together. You know, it's still a new system, a new setup, a whole lot of new players. And I fully trust that staff to get it right. I'm not so sure that they're going to be able to get certain sections of the secondary right until they're able to draft a couple more players. But hopefully they're able to improve each week. Forcing some turnovers would really go a long way on that side of the ball. But going back to Jaden Daniels, how could you not fall in love with the way that this kid plays the game? I know that there are some that, that say, you know, that maybe he's a little reckless. Me, I think he's trying to maximize the gain on every single play. Now, with a player like that, obviously there's always a chance that he could get injured. But if you look around the league, you know, almost all of the quarterbacks now have a dynamic where their quarterback takes off running. There's not many quarterbacks that don't you know, or the, excuse me, that can't run out of the pocket and make a couple moves. There's not many quarterbacks in the league now that can't do something. But in my opinion, the main thing that separates this year from last year has got to be the coaching. Last year, the offensive game plan just did not put that team in a position to win. 
the play calling sometimes was just crazy. I don't even know what was going on at times. This year, it's cold, it's calculated, it's on point. You could see they have a purpose. They know what they're trying to do. And that team moves the ball. They move the chains. Just think, they're only going to get better the more time they spend together. Let's just hope they get the defensive side of the ball right so that we're not in, you know, shootouts later on in the season because the defense can't keep the other team from scoring. Someone else that I had, honestly, I didn't know what to expect out of Luke McCaffrey. He looks like he could actually be something. You know, watching a lot of the game film, you could see down the field, he is open quite a lot. And I think eventually, you know, Jaden's going to find ways to, 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 to get the ball to him more and more. Being the type of player that Jaden is, you know, the, the first guy in the building, the last guy to leave, he's definitely got his nose in the film room. And I'm telling you, that means he has seen Luke McCaffrey as well. And he knows that that guy is open down the field. They got to find ways to get him the ball because it looks like he knows what he's doing running the route. So, you know, it'll only benefit the team. Although I will say that the running attack is on point, man. You know, I know they didn't have Eckler because of the concussion last week, but they didn't even skip a beat. A couple of years back, I remember seeing a, a Titans game where McNichols made a couple of blocks that I was completely floored by. And I, I saw on the film here uh, last, I believe it was last week, him make another one. And he's definitely an under the radar type of guy. Like a lot of people didn't see him coming at all. Like when they saw him maybe get signed, they didn't even really expect much out of him. People forget that he sat behind Derrick Henry, you know, so his name maybe isn't so well known, but he was able to sub in and do well for the Titans. And of course, B-Rob, who, you know, is probably my favorite player on the team at this point. I like the fact that he's not like the fastest running back in the league. He's not overly dynamic, but he makes guys miss, you know, that's just what he does. And he can break tackles. He can do a lot of different things. Catch the ball out of the backfield. But the more I see, the more I think that Zach Ertz is really the key to the whole thing. You know, you want a guy like Jaden Daniels to stay in his comfort zone, which he's been in lately. Zach Ertz has become his go-to guy. I realize that McLaurin is the big name receiver and those two are starting to catch fire as well. But Zach Ertz, I think is the key to it all. But at any rate, you know, I wanted to come on and talk. I hadn't been on this year and actually sat down and talked about the team the first few weeks. I wanted to see where we were sitting at after we had, you know, three or four games to look at. And guys, I think we might actually have something right here. You know, we won't know until a little bit further down the road. Obviously, this is just the beginning of the rebuild. So it's good to see in the first four weeks that they're able to, you know, win three out of the four games. It's unbelievable to see him win three in a row. In my opinion, it could be a sky's the limit kind of thing if they could get that defense right. Which brings me to the point, should this be a, a situation where, you know, we should be looking at this at a long-term plan or should we be looking at this as, you know, hey, we've got something here. This team might be able to make a run at a title. Personally, I like the idea of keeping it at a long-term plan. I mean, I'm not getting any younger. So obviously I want to see the team win just like the next man, right? But should this be viewed as a long-term thing so that we don't get our expectations too far up in the clouds, you know? Well, we got the Browns coming to town this weekend and the Browns are a hard team to judge in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, I know they've lost a few games this year already and that they're kind of underachieving a little bit in my opinion, but that team has actually got a lot of talent on it. So it, they always kind of worry me a little bit. I know that defense has got the ability to take games over. I haven't really got a chance yet to, to look at the injury report, see what that looks like yet. But, um, you know, I know that Washington is the favorite heading into that game, which I, in the past I've never paid much attention to and I'm really not going to pay much attention to now. Last thing I want to touch on is I know that there's some fans out there that are waiting for the shoe to drop and for this team just to turn, you know, like into the pumpkin, like at midnight, you know. All I'm going to say is this, guys, you know, all the shit that this fan base has been through, uh, you know, over the last, hell, 30 years, but over, it's definitely over the last five to 10, all the shit that this fan base has been through, enjoy when you can enjoy it. I mean, come on now. If you're, if you're stuck trying to find out what's wrong with everything, you're never going to enjoy anything. And for the first time since like, I don't know, like 20 
2012, 2013, maybe flashes in 2015, although I wasn't all that excited. It's actually a really good time to be a fan of the football team in Washington, of the burgundy and gold, if you would. I know that we got a portion of the fan base that's still on their crusade to bring the old, you know, the old name back, which unfortunately I don't think is ever going to happen. But I know that there's a whole uh, strong portion of the fan base that thinks that's going to happen. And, and a lot of those people are not watching the games, which I'm, I'm telling you guys, <laughs> don't disallow yourself to be happy when there's reasons to be happy. Your team has turned a corner some. I mean, is it a long-term answer? We don't know that yet. But they definitely turned the corner. You know, we finally have a quarterback that's worth talking about. Not some, oh, he could be, he, he might be. No, he is. We have a quarterback to talk about. I think some of those people need to, to step away from the edge and come back to the table, man. Come back to the table because the burgundy and gold is eating right now. I don't understand why you don't want to sit at the table and eat with us. You know, are we happy about the name? Majority of us are not, but I'd be damned if that's going to keep me from cheering from the football team that I've been cheering for my entire life. What in the hell would I want to do that for? That's, that's just silly to me. And those that like the name embrace it, man. Enjoy the team being good here at the beginning of the year. Don't let the naysayers try to get at you. I think this team's got a real good shot at being 4-1 coming out of this weekend. Now, wouldn't that be some shit? And all my fellow NFC East, you know, heads around. Guys, y'all are overpaying for your quarterback and ours is better. And that's about all I got to say about that. Let me know what y'all are thinking down in the comments. Y'all take it easy. Peace.